welcome to the Rivero Success Story Podcast. I'm Tracy, your host, and I'm going to be talking today with Coach Darren. He's also a coach at Rivero, and we're going to find out all about his journey. Hi, Darren. Hi, how you doing, Tracy? Doing great. Thank you for coming to share your success. I want to start by asking you, what was your life like, your health conditions, the foods that you ate prior to coming to the carnivore diet? Um, good question. Great to be here. Um, I, uh, you know, I've been a carnivore for some time now, approximately three years. And um, I, it's hard for me to even remember what it was actually like prior to, to eating this way, you know, this new way of, of eating. Um, how I started on this originally was I saw a, uh, a Rogan podcast with uh, Sean on it. And so I think that's pretty common with a lot of people um, that saw his his podcast Joe Rogan and it, it just caught my attention because I've I've been a fan of uh, the UFC and and uh, my, I've been a martial artist most of my life and so it was just something I watched so it was an odd thing for me to see on a podcast from you know a guy that was involved in martial arts and the UFC and so it just caught my attention uh, my story is I'll just give you a sort of a little quick uh, 30,000 foot view of, of my history when I was 19 years old uh, I had a car accident that was extremely severe um, I went off a cliff, I fell asleep on the freeway between Alberta and BC, and I actually flew off about a 50 foot cliff and, uh, I landed in, in a tree. In fact, if uh, anyone, uh, wants to go to my profile on Rivero, they'll see a picture of that automobile that was, uh, that's in there and it will show a picture of how my journey started. I broke my back. Um, I crushed my pelvis and uh, I was in a very, very bad way. I was in a coma for quite some time, several weeks. And they did not expect me to ever walk again. Um, and so it was a very challenging period of time. I was 19 years old. That's 37 years old now, uh, now so 37 years ago. And um, so, you know, I started at that point in time uh, just trying to learn how to walk again. So that's kind of where my journey started. Um, over, the, over the years, I've had a lot, of diff- a lot of difficulties with mobility. I've got nerve damage on half of my body from that. And so I fell into fitness was a big thing of mine. Um, when I was younger, I was able to be able to um, do more than I could as I got older. Uh, now that I'm 56, it's been more challenging. In the last, say, f- since I was in my 50s, it became more and more challenging. My mobility started to be reduced. And so, um, especially from my lower part of my body. So that What happened was at that point is I started to sort of lose mobility. I couldn't do the exercise that I wanted to do. And so I started to get more and more, gain more and more weight. Um, And my diet was kind of all over the place. You know, I would eat pretty much whatever. I tried to be cognizant of food. Um, I tried to stay away from a lot of packaged food and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I tried to eat whole foods, uh, but it wasn't a huge, important thing to me. Um, And so... I think it was my wife actually that that started looking at different diets and she got involved in something called keto. I didn't know what that was. She had been kind of, you know, looking at ways to lose weight. She's the same age as me. So I started with that. And, um, and that's kind of what led me to the carnivore. Um, I had started to exhibit all kinds of stomach issues. Um, I was getting a lot of gas and bloating, um, you know, just gaining weight, it seemed like at every turn. And I got up to a weight of about 280 pounds, I think it was at about six foot one, which is just not, not where I needed to be. And then that brought me into around the time when I saw the uh, podcast with Sean. And that just immediately, you know, just resonated with me. I'd always been a big meat eater, but I didn't know there was an actual term, you know, carnivore or a way of eating. Okay, so like when you did keto, how long did you do that? And did you, how, what kind of a keto was it? Was it meat heavy or? It was, it was meat heavy, um, but the, the keto part, we, it was mostly vegetable. Um, you know, we tried to stay away from any of the packaged foods or stuff that was, you know, the, the new keto friendly, you know, that you see on every shelf now because that's the new way to make money. Um, so it was a lot of vegetable and that was what kind of clued me in because I started realizing, Hey, you know, I'm eating this, this, what we call clean diet. I'm eating a lot of meat. I feel good that way. My protein levels are high. 
but I still had a lot of stomach issues. My stomach issues did not go away. Mm -hmm. And we started exploring um, the, all, at that point, I thought maybe it was a gluten thing. So we thought, okay, well, let's start eliminating gluten. Let's, let's, let's get bread out of our diet. Let's stop eating pastas. And it was an elimination thing that we did. That did help. But then I still had these feelings of, of just being uncomfortable after I ate. And uh, we were eating a lot of broccoli and a lot of cauliflower. We fell into that cauliflower mash thing, you know, where you mash up the cauliflower and add a bunch of cream in it. And, and, and that didn't do anything. I still felt horrible and gassy. And I thought, maybe this, maybe it's the vegetables that are doing this to me. I mean, how can it be vegetables? I mean, vegetables are the greatest thing that ever were ever. I mean, it, leafy greens, right? So it all just clicked when I saw Sean on the podcast and I went, you know what? That's what it is. That's what it is. And so we stopped, you know, I stopped anyways at that point and thought, you know what? I'm just going to go full carnivore just like Sean does. And it was basically instantaneous. Everything improved immediately. Um, my, what I noticed, one of the most exciting things was because I wasn't consuming any carbohydrates at all. I was a real roller coaster guy all day. So my energy would be like up, down, up, down. Moods are all over the place because I'm always chasing that next carb that came in. You know, we were taught eat, eat your grains in the morning, right? Eat your grains, you have your toast and your cereal. And that's what you needed to get your day started. But it didn't tell you at 10 o'clock, you're going to be crashing, right? So I noticed that was the, the, the biggest change for me was when I did that, you know, and, and switched over. And that's, you know, but my keto was, at that point, um, you know, it wasn't more keto at that point. Okay. So did you have any transitional issues going from your regular diet to keto and then also from keto to carnivore? Um, to keto, I would say there wasn't too much, of, although um, I did sort of feature just a moment ago, the gastrointestinal uh, situations I had, the bloating and, and gassy problems that I was having. Um, and that was the high vegetable content when I determined that's what it was. Um, and so when I eliminated those, that was a big help. In the beginning, I did see um, some constipation when I started the carnivore full, you know, when I went in and it was basically all I would do. I started to eat about three meals a day in the beginning and then down to two and then down to one. Um, I did have uh, some periods of time where I did get some constipation going and I was thinking, wow, maybe I should be adding something back in. But I went back to the reference material on the site. I went and looked at some other videos and I thought, hey, maybe I'm not you know, doing enough fat in my diet. I was eating a lot of leaner cuts, uh, New Yorks and whatnot. And I, I kind of you know, noticed that, that uh, Sean was a big ribeye guy, right? Everything was, you know, ribeye, 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 ribeye. So I thought, hey, you know, maybe I'll try that. So I did. I went in and switched into some fattier cuts, starting to add a little bit more tallow and butter and bacon grease and different things to my cooking made a big difference. Awesome. <laughs> so um, your keto switch to carnivore and carnivore, you've been for two and a half years or three, I think you said almost three. So, yeah. Um, so you're well into it and, and you're, you're not going to ever change. I expect. No, no, this is a way of eating for me for forever. Um, there's, there's absolutely no question of that. Um, you know, I've always been a big meat eater my whole life. I've never, you know, been someone that just, you know, I never fleeted with vegetarianism or, or veganism. I mean, that was never my thing, you know, ever. But um, now that I understand the relationship with food that I didn't really understand before, I had a bodybuilding background. And so the bodybuilding background was six meals a day. That's what we did, six meals a day. You did six meals, meal, 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 snack, snack, snack. And it was protein powders. And that's what you did. So, you know, it, I didn't understand that there was another way of eating. So now that I've been carnivore for this long, uh, everything is improved. My mental clarity is improved. My sleep is improved. Um, you know, just absolutely everything. Like physically, I feel great. I have my share of problems, um, you know, when it comes to all my injuries. Um, or after my main car accident, I fell off of a building and I broke both my arms, 16 places in my elbow, had it removed, broke this arm um, in a fall. So I've had my series of problems and all of those problems, arthritis and joint pain and all of these issues were a big, big part of my life. So much so that there was just never a day I wasn't in pain, always. And to this day, 
you know, to some degree, yes, that still is just the way I'm going to have to live. But on a scale of one to 100, I'm 95 now in as far as the pain scale from all of those things, because I have literally eradicated the inflammation from my body. It's, it's gone. And so that is just it's it's life changing and for anybody else out there that's just even considering it or has even that's why i wanted to start this is because i wanted to show people that even someone like me that has chronic pain chronic problems um maybe brought on by their lifestyle or just things that happen to them that this this way of eating can help them huge really huge so yeah so you you only eat one meal a day and that's what you mentioned at the end. You got yeah, to- generally, generally speaking. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not dogmatic about it. So I don't, nothing is hundred percent constant. I don't make, I let myself have some freedom. So if I'm out for a business lunch and everybody's having lunch, I'll have a, a hamburger, you know, hold the bun, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, and I'll have that and then I'll have, but, but the majority of my, just because it fits my lifestyle so well, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'm not hungry. Your body knows what it's been doing. And so when you get up and you get onto a nomad type of, 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 of a lifestyle, then you're not hungry. You don't look at food. That's the beauty of it. You don't look at it. You're already nourished. You're great from the last night. You had a super fantastic sleep. You get up. I do grab a coffee. I'm a coffee guy. So I grab a coffee and off I go. And I don't even think about food other than what should I take out of the freezer for meat that night? So how am I going to cook it? Is it going to be a crock pot, a smoker, or, you know, whatever. So the freedom is just fantastic. I mean, it, it's just great. There's no packing lunch. You know what I mean? There's there's right. none of that stuff, right? Right, right. So for your one meal a day, what does that look like? Do you include dairy or do you include, um, you know, like cheese or cream or any of that? Or do you just strictly stick to meat and different kinds of meat? And do you have more than one meat at, at your one meal? Do you eat quite a bit of meat at one time? Um, all of the above. So um, I'm not, I am a animal products carnivore. So I'm not just meat. I tolerate um, animal, all animal products. So, so dairy, I have no problem. I'm, I don't drink milk or anything like that. I, I didn't do that since I was a kid, but I'm a big cheese fan. Um, my wife is Danish, so I have to be a big cheese fan. <laughs> it's just yep. how it is. So we always have, you know, fantastic cheeses in our fridge. So I do that. Uh, a regular dinner for me would be, um, some kind of meat. So I eat all kind of meat. Um, I eat pork, I eat fish, um, salmon, uh, a lot. We have, um, all kinds of beef, of course, ground beef is something that I do in a lot of different things. I make a famous meatloaf. You can find it on my Instagram, carnivore grandpa, fantastic meatloaf. So, um, it, and one of the big things in the beginning was kind of hard to get used to is that when you've had a certain way of living your whole life, the, the no side thing was kind of weird. Like, you know, because you're just making a bunch of meat, like I'll get on my smoker and I'll take a whole bunch of pork chops and throw them on there and then put them on the table and everybody just, you know, goes to town. But they're like, if anybody's visiting, they're like, there's no rice or potato or, you know, it's weird, right? Well, there's nothing else here. But um, my eating window is generally, if it's an OMAD day, my eating window will be around dinner time. So depending on when we make it, it might be five o'clock. I generally, because I haven't eaten all day, I may only eat a portion. So I might eat a big ribeye um, or, you know, a, a, a fairly a substantial part of the ribeye. And then I'll stop if I'm full. And then about an hour or two later, I'll think, actually, I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I'll finish that ribeye. Or if it's gone already and I've eaten it, I might have a nice piece of cheese or, you know, something like that. Um, so that's, and, and then when I'm full, I'm full. You know, that's, that's it. That's another thing that I keep telling people that's so brilliant about carnivore is that your only measuring stick is your own diet, your own uh, hunger. So eat till you're full. That's it. You don't have to count. It's not macros. I can't this many grams. It's the, you know, you just eat till you're full and then you're done. And if you do that regularly. That's it. Yeah. Does, did it take you a while to understand your cues from your body sometimes people have a hard time with that it's like if they've been eating overeating and having a whole bunch of carbs they have a hard time saying i'm full it can be um it depends again where you come from if you have come from a standard american diet in my opinion which i've helped folks that way too then it's going to be a larger challenge in my opinion if you're if you're a heavy sugar addict and i'm not saying that in a negative person 
people go out looking for sugar, but it's in everything. So if you're coming off of a heavy carbohydrate diet and a heavy sugar diet, which is a processed food diet, then your weaning period is going to be more challenging. It, it is. It's going to those neural signals that are going off telling you, I, I should eat, I should eat, I'm hungry. Um, my suggestion to my clients is just, you know, go maybe have something to drink, have a glass of water, some lemon water, or have, you know, something that you feel that you're putting something in your stomach and it'll probably just go away. And, and it, it, it's quite quick how, how the transition takes place when you start going off the carbohydrates and sugar. It doesn't take very long before you start sort of triggering and going, okay, I get this now. Like I'm not, I am not really that hungry. I would say in a few weeks for me, I was all in. Like I didn't have any, there was no issues at all. Like I wasn't chasing food anymore. It was not, I wasn't opening the fridge, you know, going in there. Uh, for me, uh, one of the challenges was uh, evenings in the beginning. Uh, it wasn't daytime, I was busy, you know, I was out running, you know, working. But in the evenings, we had a, a, a you know, that time where you kind of put the kids down or whatever, you sit down and you throw a, a series you're watching on get a couple hours into that and then, or whatever. And then you're like, Hmm, it's kind of like time when I would have a snack right now. I'd be going to get ice cream. You know, what do we got in the fridge? What's the chips in the cupboard? You know, that it was more of a mental thing. And I'd think I'm not that I'm really not hungry, but it's just because it was habit. We do it every night. So that was, that was a challenge. Right. I often told my clients, if you're not hungry for meat, then you're not really hungry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think to yourself, one of the things I do is I think to myself, if I'm really that hungry, then why don't I just go make that burger up, heat that burger up that I had from, from in the fridge. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, I'm good. So I'm hungry, right. It's uh -huh. just that I'm looking for that sweet. I'm looking for that, that potato chip with the seed oils in it or whatever the stuff is that they put in it that, you, you know, you're going to open the bag. And it's going to be gone. Like the bag's not, it's, it's not going to be anything left. You know, if you open that bag, right. It's, it's, <laughs> Tell yourself you can have a couple of chips, right? But no. <laughs> well, yeah. Darren, you have really been on a, an a, a amazing journey with your injuries and your car wreck and all that. My heart goes out to you. That is sounds incredible, I'm sure, to try to recover from. But you've you've done it. You've got rid of the inflammation in your body and and you've gotten healed a lot. And I know there's still challenges for you, but you know what to do. And so that really makes it good. And since you're a coach, we, we like to ask a question of what your coaching philosophy is so that those who would like to hire you as their coach can know what you, how you would do that. Absolutely, um, for sure. Um, and thank you for that. Um, you know, life is always a challenge. It's never not going to be a challenge and, and some for some more than others. And, and that's kind of, it's really the reason I made the step over into the coaching and I really started to sort of jump in with both feet because I see a lot of people, you know, in my travels day to day. And I understand that there's a lot of people that are challenged and, and it's a lot of it's education. I mean, a, a lot of it is education. We have been inundated as a, as a society for the last 50, 70 years with a doctrine of this is what you do. It started with the food pyramid, all that kind of stuff. And then it went into the non-fat phase and it went into this entire um, just a, 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 almost like a cult, like this is what people have to do. And the thing is, people think that they're just people aren't listening. They actually are listening. People are listening. They have, have been listening. If you look at when they put in the food pyramid, you'll see obesity, heart disease and, and diabetes go right along, you know, over the years to, you know, levels that are just not even seen. So to my, what I'd like to be able to do is, is take my clients and, and, and one of our things that we use is change their relationship to food so we can educate them and make them understand that, that everything that they're going into the store and looking at, it isn't healthy. It's not good for you. It, it's, it's sold to you because it's about dollars and cents and it's cheap to make. And so if, if I can take one person at a time and let them understand that there's, that they can change everything in their life by just by what they're eating, I mean, entirely. And I've been successful with folks that have, uh, have done that. If, just listen, just don't eat this, stop here and make sure that, you know, you understand that what you're putting in your body is going to have this kind of effect. And 
education is what I want them to, to be able to ultimately do. And then I want to give them a plan. You know, here's your plan. You know, it's going to take time. It's not going to be easy. But if you have this medication that you're taking and this medication and you have this, and, you know, all these different things, you've got high blood pressure, heart disease. I had all those things. You know, I was 80, 60 pounds overweight, you know, not, not, not exercising anymore because I could no longer, I could walk, but I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even ride my elliptical like I used to do. So here I am getting bigger heart, you know, and so that's my, my thought to, to anyone out there listening let me help you. Let me have, you know, let me understand where you're at in your life. I'll, I'll understand limitations. That's what I understand. I get it. If you tell me that I can't do that, Darren, I can't exercise, you know, exercise can be a, a, a pivotal um, help to what to a diet and carnivore, but it, ultimately at the end of the day, you don't have to. We can help you. I can help them achieve their goals without having to run a, a mile a day or even be able to get out of a chair. We just have to understand what, what, how they need to change their relationship with food and, and learn a new way. Wow. That sounds excellent. That's an excellent philosophy. So you, you lost weight. How much weight did you lose? About 60 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About 60. Um, I was, I had, like I said, I did a lot of weightlifting my whole life. So um, I, I, you know, I carry a lot of muscle. And so, you know, my body weight is funny because I, I, um, I'm about 220 pounds now. Now I got up to about 280. So, and, and I'm comfortable here. No matter what I do now, I'm, I'm, this is where I'm at. Like if I jump on a scale week to week, that's where I sit. That's just my comfortable body weight. But because I had so much muscle from you know being a, a heavy weight trainer, I did an emoji and it set me up on the, uh, on the video game. And it gave me this little round fat emoji because my weight and my height, I'm supposed to be fat. <laughs> so it was quite funny. But um, no, it's... Um, it's just exciting and um, I'm happy to be part of the team. Yeah, we're, we're happy to have you as a coach. And so you also decreased your blood pressure and did you, you took care of your gut health issues and was there anything else that carnivore did for you? Um, those were the main things. Um, my, my blood pressure has come down dramatically. Um, the diet has helped me in my, I guess the, I keep calling it my relationship to food, but in a daily, in a daily activity scale, instead of always having to be hunting for food. I mean, I love that. I, I love that feeling of being able to go through an entire day and go and not be worrying about when my next meal was going to come from. So that's been, you know, from a physical point, I, I always taken care of myself pretty well. So I didn't have a whole slew of, I didn't have, I wasn't diabetic um yet you know that i knew of i wasn't i don't know if i was pre-diabetic or not but on the, the the track that i was going i probably would have been um and my intestinal issues had been a big problem for a while so those are the main three things that that i really that changed for me i didn't have skin issues i didn't have a lot of other things that may have come in time i got caught it early you know i i, I got into this thing i was i was motivated to find out what was going on in my body. I clearly didn't know what was going on with my body. And so I just started the search. Mm -hmm. now, you know, of the internet, because we can go out there and self-advocate ourselves. We can go out there and we can learn, you know, I ran into, to Sean Baker and that was it. You know, I bought his book, you know, great book, by the way, if you, you know, if you guys haven't read it, go get it. It's a great book. And then I went and found Dr. Paul Saladino, read his book, Carnivore Code. And then I got, you know, I think this is uh this is our Bible. Have you read this? Yes, the cookbook. Uh -huh. Yeah, the cookbook. You know, so it's um, it's great. It's just great. That's that's those are the main areas that I've that, that's changed my life, and uh, it'll always be this way. Now, that's the thing I love about it the most is you can feel in control. You know, you're in control of your life. You know, if for some reason I decided to go off carnivore or, you know whatever happened or something happened in life where I, I couldn't get meat or whatever you know whatever the case may be whatever it is I have the, the intellect and the knowledge now that that when those environments change that you're right back you know you're 100 in control you're not sitting there going wow what do I do I, you know on this this 14th yo-yo diet and I've gained a whole pile of weight and now I'm a big fat slob and I am depressed and I feel crappy because I I can't hold anything together and I've dieted and I'm up and I'm down and up and down we have, I had the key. 
we have the key to the lock, right? Right. Absolutely. It's the answer. And, and I think just the diet industry tries to get people to go this way and that way on these different fad things. And it really takes a toll on people after a while. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Darren, for, for coming to share your success. I'm, I'm amazed at your journey. Well, thank you. I, I thank you. I thank you for inviting me on and, uh, you know, it may not be for everybody. Um, you know, they're all, everybody's journey is different, but, um, you know, if, uh, I think we're helping a lot of people by, by doing this, you know, and that's, that's really my goal. You know, there's a lot of folks out there that definitely need some direction and they just don't know what direction to go. So let's go and help them, you know, One of the <laughs> True. Appreciate, appreciate the time. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate your time too. And if anyone needs a great coach, Look Darren up on Rivera and he'll he'll help you out. Yeah. And uh you can come and uh, join my Instagram. It's it's uh at there at, at um, carnivore grandpa. And uh you can just join there. Um I put daily food logs on there so you'll see an example of uh, pretty much what I eat every day. And so I'll take photographs of that, put it up there if I'm smoking something on a smoker, or if I'm making some fish tonight, salmon night. So we're gonna have the dinner is gonna be up there tonight, you know, and uh matter what journey you're on if you're on you know like i said earlier i get a little bit of uh problem from some folks that are saying well you're not carnivore then if you're eating that you know they see something on my plate that doesn't look like it's just meat but i tell them i said you have to as, as a closing thought i want people to understand that, that that we're not dogmatic about this we're not we're not telling you that you have to only eat salt and water and and and, and beef you know I, I believe personally my belief is that you have to find something that works for you and so whatever that thing is, and I know that carnivore in your life in some fashion will, will be the trick. It'll be the staple that will get you on that path. You might stray every now and then, but at the end of the day, that's what's going to do it. So, but you have to, you have to live your life, you know, so you have to have some flexibility in things. And with my, in my way of thinking, the carnivore diet has given me all the flexibility in the world, period. So Either way, I go left to right to center. I'm back on center like that if I want to be. So, oh yeah, I I agree. I agree. It's it's really a simple diet, but it's the answer people are really searching for. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was for good for two million years, right? Right. <laughs> it was good for two million years. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Seventy years that we've been told it's bad, right? Right. Right. Well, thank you, Darren, and I thank will. Thank you. I'll. I'll Talk to you soon and see you around in the community. You bet. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.